So I can't believe that we didn't catch this. Do you guys remember this video? This is my Magnus Opus for this channel, for the direction the channel is going. It is my grand theory that really isn't much of a theory. It's more like stated fact based on the manga on why Goku's Ultra Instinct, Mastered Ultra Instinct, how Goku got it, how it works, and why it is basically transforming him into an angel the same way that Danny Phantom turns into a phantom. It's the exact same principle. But during that video, there was one thing that I really could not explain and I told you that I would come back to you guys when I had more information on it and that is the anime version of it. The anime version of events that created Goku into Ultra Instinct, that pushed him to go into Ultra Instinct. Because being pushed to activate Ultra Instinct on a ethereal plane is way different than being pushed into ultra instinct by getting destroyed by a spirit bomb it's basically what happened so i did my research i scoured the scrolls and the articles the manga trying to see if i had any more information for you guys on why this happened in the anime and i do in today's video, not only can I show you that the exact same thing happened in the manga, but why it happened and why this connects Goku to the gods. So if you know what moment I'm about to talk about, let me know in the comment section below. You already know the drill and see if you got it right at the end of the video. Huge shout out to my ground crew. Again, you guys are always here. This guy in particular, always here to debate my ideas thank you so much for being here day in and day out you guys are getting us closer to fulfilling the 500k mortal land if you want to be part of this dream just hit the subscribe button so a few days ago i made a reaction to this it was the first time that this portion of the manga has been animated it is a beautiful animation by ren and rope and it is essentially goku versus planet moro and you can see just why it took a long time for anybody to animate it because animating planet moro is a little bit difficult with how much detail goes into this character and it isn't one of the big fights that everybody likes to animate animation takes a lot of work a lot of time and you want to have a lot of interest behind it it, but once it dropped it blew up and honestly the animation is fantastic it is great great pacing it just looks professional everything is spot on but there was one moment when i reviewed this animation that i told you i need to come back to this and that is this moment right here I do not remember this whatsoever and I'm so glad I am rereading the Dragon Ball Super manga but it is the moment where Vegeta throws a spirit bomb at Goku and he activates Ultra Instinct and I was like wait a minute did this happen in the manga? Let's begin. Dragon Ball Super manga chapter 66 a fitting a fitting number for this chapter Moro consumer of worlds. This chapter begins with Moro fusing with the planet and he is absorbing anybody who's standing on it. He is absorbing their key. He is absorbing their energy. Vegeta's the first one to notice this and he says everybody get off the ground because he's absorbing your energy and that's basically what Moro is. He's eating the planet inside out. Goku tries to face off against the planet but it is really difficult when it is the entire planet against you and you are you know living on the planet you're existing on the planet i mean i don't know what toyotaro was thinking about this part right here but yeah you are existing on the planet and so goku is up against all odds to the point where beerus actually says that he is going to help He's going to help lend a hand to save planet Earth. His buy is coming in, exactly what I said in my last video. Beerus is now friends with all the Z fighters. He's got a special affinity to planet Earth and Goku, Vegeta, especially Bulma. He is willing to go, you know, far for them. And honestly, this whole scene itself 
it could make a whole other video on delving into more of Beerus being kind toward mortals. But he gets a phone call because of the mirror situation, a very believable way to kick him out of the story. I like what you did here, Toyotaro. And then Whis has a little pep talk with Goku, telling him how to beat Moro, and he even gets to go 1v1 with Moro himself. And just a quick side note here, I gotta give it to Toyotaro. This chapter, after rereading it, is just phenomenal. This is like Toyotaro firing on all cylinders and to be honest the Moro arc is just such a precious gem in the Dragon Ball mythos. I cannot wait to see if Toyotaro gives us the exact same type of story at least in terms of storytelling, character development, and just its grit. It is just a phenomenal story and I hope that future arcs are like this. And honestly, the more that I reread the Dragon Ball Super manga, the more props I gotta give Toyotaro because he's doing a phenomenal job in just interweaving a bunch of different points of story, almost like Toriyama did. Toriyama dropped story bits early on or here and there and then kind of connected them later down the line. Toyotaro does the exact same thing. Anyway, that's enough glazing Toyotaro. So Goku's gotta destroy the crystal in Moro's head and that's when Vegeta comes in to help and Vegeta is using spirit fission to punch energy out of Moro to weaken him. This leaves an opening for Goku to basically attack his crystal but as he flies in he gets trapped by Moro's many many hands and stuck in the earth himself. So a very believable way to stop Goku especially if each one of those hands is absorbing his key exactly what's going on right here. Goku even basically states that Moro is absorbing all his god key so he can't maintain these divine forms or this god form very long and that's when Jocko gets the idea for more god power and leaves. It was honestly painful to see Goku go from Ultra Instinct and then go back to normal as Vegeta yells, don't power down. You know, it, it, it feels like dire. Like these are dire circumstances that they're in. It's just, just such beautiful zest from the story. Piccolo then comes up with a plan that if Vegeta can manipulate other people's key in the way of spirit fission, Maybe he can absorb the key in the same similar manner as the spirit bomb, which is something that Vegeta says it's the same principle, so he doesn't see any reason why he could not. And then he absorbs everybody's key. He absorbs all the Z fighters. He then asks Dende to help with whoever is on Kami's lookout to absorb their key. And he's got like a little spirit bomb right here. But then when Goten and Trunks send their key, this is foreshadowing that they are actually powerful in their own right. They are very strong on their own and in the future they may be very important in that aspect because when their key comes from the sanctuary, Vegeta sees the sizable difference and the, the quality of difference in this key. Vegeta throws the key at Goku and this looks promising but it only elicits a Super Saiyan Blue response from Goku. Moro is far stronger than Super Saiyan Blue at this point so he's not letting go and he's absorbing the key faster than Goku can try to fly forward. Dende says that his own divine power is still developing so he's not much help in this situation so we saw that the key from everybody and Goten and Trunks and a little bit of divine key from Dende was only enough to push Goku into Super Saiyan Blue. That's fine. It literally seems like all is for naught and that is when we get this. An actual spirit bomb, but this is humongous. Look at the mounts in the back, how big this spirit bomb actually is from Vegeta manipulating the key from other people and you have to ask yourself where does this come from who sent this key and that is when Goku gives us what he needs what ultra instinct needs god power I feel divine strength the similarities between god power god key and divine power they're almost interchangeable Goku and Vegeta have god power god key because when they go into Super Saiyan Blue or Super Saiyan God, they have that. Honestly, with the Super Saiyan God transformation, it gives them that God key anyway. And so they have this God key. But true divine power comes from the Kais, 
the angels and to a lesser extent the gods of destruction and that is when we find out that oob is the one that is sending the key because majin buu transformed back into the supreme kai and told him what to do as we see this scene and then dende explains it it's oob oob had that power all along of course, the great Lord of Lords divine power must have gone to the evil half of Majin Buu during the split, meaning that the Fat Buu only got the strength and whatever was left of Fat Buu, and then the divine power of the Kai, his status, his divine energy went into Kid Buu, which honestly explains why Kid Buu was as powerful as he was, but when he died and he was reincarnated, he was now Oob, and Oob has that divine power. Again, brilliant foreshadowing from Toyotaro telling us that Oob is going to be not only extremely powerful later down the line, enough to make something like this, but at the exact same time, they are telling us that Oob more than likely is going to be on that God, Super Saiyan God level or Super Saiyan Blue level, maybe even Ultra Instinct Beast, something along those lines. If he develops his powers, he will be there because he has a divine energy. And I'll come back to this more here in a little bit because it's very important. After Vegeta gets this key, he throws it at Goku. And this is the first time that we see Goku Susano. The Susano is the manifestation of Mastered Ultra Instinct. All the power that comes from it when it's too much for Goku's body is similar to what Moro was going through where the angel power, the divine power is too much for him so he had to absorb the planet. It's the same thing with Goku. That's why he's so large. And Goku then after the first time we've seen this transformation i mean you can see everyone is shocked everyone's surprised like what the hell is this thing goku is able to break the crystal and save the day but this is the first time we're seeing master ultra instinct and it was pushed goku was pushed into using this by the divine power of oob the divine power that's so strong that was able to push Goku into this new power and just activate Ultra Instinct in its most purest form, at least the strongest form that we have up to this point. So when I go back to the anime, when I watch what's going on in that scene, who's giving power and all that, there are a few people here that have God Key like Goku and Vegeta. If you want to take those into account, because I had to rewatch it a few times just to make sure I didn't miss like a Kai giving key or something. I don't know if the Supreme Kai did. If I missed it, let me know. But um, it's the same principle. Goku used the Spirit Bomb and the Spirit Bomb activated Ultra Instinct Omen. And I feel like Toyotaro, this is his way of explaining why that happened, in a sense, giving us some reality to attach to the anime where the Spirit Bomb is the one that activated Ultra Instinct or Master Ultra Instinct in this sense because of who gave key and how much was given. Basically, it is divine key that only angels and supreme kais and, and gods of destruction have. Goku already had that in the Ultra Instinct transformation, but he needed a jump start to get it going to this point right here where he is now a kaiju. So this honestly triples down the fact that Toyotaro is essentially saying that this is an angel. Basically, when Goku goes into Mastered, he is a de, a de facto angel and he tried to connect this these events to the anime. And just so you guys don't think that I'm getting twisted when it comes to what God Key can do to a Saiyan or what divine power can do to a Saiyan, I need to go to the last exhibit in this showcase and that is my favorite character, Goku Black. And when you watch this part of Goku Black's arc and you see him transform, something else that really wasn't explained in the anime is explained here. Where Samazu, a Kai, says, So when a divine being surpasses Super Saiyan God, instead of turning blue, they turn 
pink, meaning that with Akai conjoined, like Akai's spirit and Akai's divine energy joined with Goku, a mortal, once he transforms, he, he, he changes into Super Saiyan Rose, showing that divine power has an active change on Saiyans. And he even says divine power here. Like this is one of the few times that they say divine power in the Dragon Ball Super manga. So I think I've made it quite clear. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Honestly, I'm having a blast rereading the manga and delving into it. If there's anything you guys want me to talk about in the future with regards to the manga, I'm all ears. Drop it down in the comment section below, but uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Subscribe for more content.